Securing your yarn ends properly is essential to preventing them from popping out, but sometimes no matter how hard we try, those tails can pop out of their hiding spots after use or washes. So in today's video, I'm going to share how to stop those silly buggers from popping out once and for all. What I'm going to teach today is basically a two-step process. Each tip can be used on their own with great success, but boy, when you use them together, it's like a one-two punch in boxing. They're a knockout. So for step number one, for keeping your tail ends from popping out, bury them. For example, I like to weave my tails in three opposite directions, but my goal is always to place my last pass in the thickest place that I can find to bury that tail. So even if I'm in a location that isn't very thick, I'll work my way to a spot that has more stitches. And then when I cut the end, I tug ever so slightly before I cut. That way the yarn can spring back in place under those stitches. Now that's gonna work really well for you, but that's not all. We can make this even better with step number two, which is split your yarn. What I mean by this is that you want to take your tail and actually work into your yarn fibers as you're weaving the end, rather than going under and around those stitches. I recommend that you use a sharp darning needle for this. A standard tapestry needle isn't going to pierce through those stitches. I like to use plastic canvas needles. They have a nice eye for the yarn as well as a point on the tip. But I'd also recommend a chenille needle. These have very sharp points and the size 18 can usually accommodate most yarn weights. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love the Susan Bates finishing needles and these work great for this because although they're plastic, they have a really sharp point and they go easily through the yarn fibers. You can find the plastic canvas needles and the chenille needles at your local superstore or craft shop, but for the Susan Bates ones, I do have to order online at Amazon, and you can find the link to that in the description box below the video. So again, the goal here as you're weaving in your yarn, you want to go through the stitches rather than around them. This is going to help you bury the yarn even more into the stitches and help hold it in place since it's sitting within the fibers. Snip your yarn as you normally would, bada bing, bada boom, your end is in place. You can also do this one on its own and you don't have to necessarily go into the thickest areas, but once you combine those two together, that guy is not coming out. A side note here, it is more difficult to do with chunky yarn because we don't have plies to work into. So I would recommend instead just to add a little stitch with the needle and thread to keep that tail tucked in. I like to do this with my chunky blankets and it doesn't have to be complicated, just a simple double knot tie and you're good to go. So what about the ends that have already popped out? For this hack, I recommend trying a felting needle to in essence needle felt your yarn together. Now I don't mean to join it together, just to hold it in place. Now obviously this works the best with wool yarn, but you can also do it with cotton and acrylic. And that's because you're essentially forcing those fibers to tangle together. You can find these supplies at your local craft store or on Amazon. This is an old set of mine that I got years ago and it's seen better days, but basically it's just a very sharp needle with a piece of foam to work on. But you can use a sponge or even a thick bristle brush. To do this, just take your yarn and tuck it back under the stitches and gently push the needle through the fibers a few times to mesh them together. You notice here I'm going sort of under and between, not going over the top of everything, because remember it is going to tangle the yarn. So I don't want to make it look too much of a mess on the outside. Remember a little bit goes a long way here. If you do too much, you will start felting your yarn. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed these tips. And if you have any that you've tried that you found useful, I'd love to know. You guys always come up with such great ideas in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.